All right, good morning, everybody. So let's get right into this. So as most of you are probably very well aware, poultry production facilities are large contributors to air pollution. And so in this case, we're mostly looking at ammonia and size fractionated particulate matter. So as of right now, there have been quite a few studies that have documented the uncontrolled release from these types of facilities, but there's still quite a bit of work to be done in the way of understanding how well these emissions can be controlled using commercially available control technologies. And then this becomes important when you're considering uh, poultry health and the quality of life that these birds have uh, during production, as well as reducing the environmental footprint that poultry production has. And as urban encroachment on rural areas becomes more of an issue, there's going to be more of a push towards reducing emissions, especially in terms of, in terms of odors. So for this study, we used two side-by-side -side grow out barns. Uh, one barn served as a control. Each housed about 8,000 birds, and they were all grown on chopped straw. So PLT is sodium bisulfate in powder form. And we did three applications over two production cycles. Uh, each application used about 900 kilograms. And so in the first cycle, we did two applications. And then in the second, we only did one. So we use a push spreader inside the barn to apply it on top of the litter. And there's just a, a picture of the inside of the turkey facility. So once PLT is applied to litter, it dissolves and produces hydrogen ions, which reduce the pH of the litter. At lower pHs, the equilibrium reaction between ammonia and ammonium in the litter tends towards the ammonium side, which binds to sulfate ions producing ammonium sulfate, and in that form, it's bound in the litter and isn't available for volatilization later on. So looking at some of the results, uh, this graph shows a summary of litter conditions throughout both production cycles. What I'd like to draw your attention to are the two on the far right hand side showing litter pH. And what you can see around these vertical blue lines indicating a PLT application is that the pH drops drastically very shortly after an application. And during this time you would see uh, a very a large amount of the ammonia generation being suppressed, so concentrations inside the barns are going to be very low. Taking a look at emission rates, um, it's a little easier to see in the second graph here during the second production cycle. But you can see that emission rates in the treatment barn dropped far below that of the control, and they were sustained over a short period of time. In terms of cumulative emission, uh, you can see that the slope of the line for the treatment barn drops below that of the control and then over time it gradually increases until the slopes are nearly parallel again and this indicates that the effect of the PLT over time is lessened. So in terms of PM, uh, there was no direct relationship between the use of PLT and the emission of particulate matter. Uh, it's not designed to work that way, but what we were hoping to see was a reduction in the fine particulate matter size fraction due to a reduced level of secondary inorganic aerosol generation. So just to quickly sum things up, uh, PLT is a very effective tool at reducing not only uh, the emission of ammonia, but also lowering in-house concentrations of ammonia. And throughout this study, we saw that the average reduction was about 57%, which lasted on average about 11 days. And since it's uh, consumed in the litter through chemical reactions over time, it would be beneficial to reapply PLT several times throughout a production cycle to maintain um, lower levels of ammonia inside the facility. And that's it. Any questions?